All right, what's, what just happened today to the stock of Biomarin? The drug company specializes in treating rare diseases. Today was Biomarin's research and development day, and the stock got slammed, falling $4.92, over 5%. The reason? All right, now, Biomarin has six different drugs on the market, including a bunch of treatments for rare metabolic disorders. And it's also got a terrific pipeline with some exciting hemophilia compounds, among others. I'm a big fan of these orphan drugs, in part because they always command very high prices. That's really the only way companies will bother spending the money to develop cures for diseases that only affect small groups of people. However, Biomarin's stock has been a bit of a laggard of late. And once again, the stock got hit, even though there were so many positive updates about the pipeline. And management told us that 2017 product revenue will come in at or around the midpoint of their guidance. While Biomarin's doing as well as they predicted or better in most of the world, the Brazilian business has been hurt by a slowdown in drug spending from Brazil's government. That may not sound like a big deal, but with these high-flying biotechs, even something that small can cause the stock to get hurt. So should we be worried about Biomarin here, or do we need to take a, perhaps a longer-term view and see the sell as a buying opportunity. Let's check it with JJ Bienname. He's the CEO of Biomarin Pharmaceutical. Get a better sense of how it's incredible, the inventive company's doing, where it's headed. Mr. Bienname, welcome back to Mad Money. <laughs> Thank you so much, JJ. How are you doing, Jim? Well, JJ, you, you know, I read through the presentation. Yeah. My major takeaway was on page three, and then went through, which is that what your company does. It is an R&D engine that knows how to bring drugs to market mm -hmm. in an efficient, good way that makes a lot of money for shareholders. For instance, you're talking a lot about the new hemophilia drug, mm -hmm. which could be amount to a cure. So could you walk our viewers through something like that? Because that means more to them than a stock that's down four in a day. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we had a very exciting update today about our entire uh, pipeline. Uh, but hemophilia A gene therapy was obviously uh, a, a very important highlight. We now have a green light from regulatory authorities in U.S. and Europe to move forward with our phase three trial. We should start the phase three pivotal trials uh, before the end of the year. And uh, so far in the first uh, you know, 12, 14 patients we've treated, uh, we've been able to show that with just one, uh, one hour intravenous infusion of the drug, patients are basically free of uh, bleeding episodes and need uh, for recombinant factor eight injections. And some patients now have been treated for over a year. So this is very exciting. Right. As compared to what they have to do today, for right? Their I mean, BioVerative has has something, but it's yeah. a different formulation. But it, it, this is—you're talking about a cure. Well, I mean, the, you have to be careful using well, the, word, I, the word "cure," but I would okay. say, or as close to a cure as can get, in a sense that so far it appears that we're able to eliminate uh, bleeding episodes for these patients with just one uh, treatment, potentially for the entire lifetime. Okay. That is very exciting. You also talked about uh, new treatments, uh, IND, the IND in the second half of 2018 for Friedrich's ataxia, yeah. another disease, targeted disease, yeah. that you have something big for. Yeah, I mean, this is, so we announced this is our next uh, uh, clinical candidate. Friedrich's ataxia is a neurodegenerative disorder, genetic disorders. Uh, patients don't produce for ataxin, and then they, they become uh, wheelchair-bound by the end of, you know, 14, 15. Um, for the severe form of the disease, which is 80% of the patients. Around 20,000 patients in the world, no approved therapy today. Uh, patients die generally of, uh, of uh, you know, cardiac uh, myopathy. So huge unmet medical need, perfect for Baumarin. Uh, so we are, you know, we have six drugs on the market now. We have three products in the, in the clinical trials right now. Hemophilia A, Vazoritide for achondroplasia, and Peg Valley S for PKU. The three, those three drugs are billion dollar plus opportunities. So and really uh, uh, talk to me about, about dwarfism, where we are there. Yes, this is the, so it's Vazoritide right. for achondroplasia. We communicated today at the uh, R&D update that uh, we now have data on the 30 months of treatment, two and a half years of treatment, and we have, uh, we have shown that we are continuing to show improvement in growth velocity. The patients continue to grow faster than other achondroplastic patients. Achondroplasia is the number one cause of human dwarfism in the world. So it's a How do you that. have the, the substantial part of your, of your excellent R&D is literally manufacturing. You, yes. have, you are an unbelievable manufacturer of drugs. Yeah, we have a very large manufacturing footprint. We have uh, uh, now four manufacturing facilities basically in the world, uh, including the new gene therapy facility we just, we just completed. Um, in, uh, in California, so I think we believe we have the largest uh, AAV gene therapy manufacturing facility in the world today that's operational. Are we still the leader in biotech in the world? 
you say we, you say Bob, right? <laughs> you know, by, <laughs> United States, the invent, I mean, you know, our inventive capability. I think definitely. Are we, because I worry State, about like, Trump health care. You know, yeah. I worry about these things, JJ. No, no, the U.S. is definitely still the leader in the, in the world biotech business, no question. And hopefully it will stay that way. And, and if we easy. fool around with the health care system too much, could that go away? It could go away, but I think despite all the uh, rhetorical issues, uh, drug pricing, I think most of the people in power today in Congress and in, in Washington, I think they believe, they believe in, uh, in competition as the best way to regulate drug right. pricing and not government regulation. But I just know if I had a family member or a kid that had one yeah. of these things, Biomarin may be my only hope. All right. Thank you. That's J.J. Bianamay, the CEO of Biomarin Pharmaceutical. I need you to read the presentation because it takes a 10-year perspective, not a 10-minute perspective like a lot of the hedge funds have. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.